In this lecture, I will show you how to make a cluster gram in MATLAB. A hierarchical clustering is another way to visualize high-dimensional data, and it clusters observations by distance and builds a hierarchical structure on top of that. It gives more detailed information of differences among clusters. For example, it can tell you which genes contribute the most to the difference between two clusters. Here is an example of hierarchical cluster gram. It is made of a heat map in the middle, diagrams on the left and top, and a row and a column labels on the right and out bottom. There is also a scale bar on the left. This is the same data set as I used in the PCA plotting. Each column is one tumor cell, gene expression profile, and each row is a gene. The color suggests relative expression values and uh, red indicates higher expression values, blue indicates lower expression values. Looking at the column labels, we found that the gene expression file of the same subtype nicely clustered together. And there are three red clusters in the heat map corresponding three subtypes. Recall that the colors suggest the expression values. We can say that this bunch of genes at the upper side are highly expressed in cluster 1, which are subtype 3. And these genes in the middle are highly expressed in subtype 2. And these genes at the bottom is highly expressed in cluster 3, which are the subtype 1. Here is an example of simulated cluster gram by random numbers. In this cluster gram, no distinct clusters can be observed. Red and blue colors just mixed all together, and the column labels of three subtypes are also expectedly mixed. You cannot find order in it. I always want to present a random figure because the tumor cell gene expression data we used is quite good. You can see clear patterns in it, but many data sets will be noisy and fall between the nice tumor cell data and the simulated random data. Though the cluster gram may look amazing and complex at first sight. Its mechanism is quite simple. In this and the next few slides, I will explain how it works. Suppose we now have A2F, six gene expression profiles. The left are their representation in a two-dimensional PCA figure. The question is how we would like to cluster them. Well, by I, you may want to cluster BC together DEF together and leave A alone. But this is quite arbitrary. So is there a way to rationally and computationally cluster the data points? Hierarchical clustering offers the solution. Here is the process. First, we calculate the distance between every two points and find that DE has the shortest distance. We cluster DE together and treat it DD as one single data point. Now we have five points. Point A, point B, point C, point D, point F. Then we calculate the, the distance of every two of these five points. And then we find that point B and point C have the shortest distance. Then we cluster BC together and treat the BC as one single data point. And now we are left with four data points point A, point B, C, point D, and point F. Then in the next round of calculation, we find a point D E and a point F have the shortest distance and cluster them as point D E F. We iterate this process until we got one single cluster that contains all data points. The whole process as illustrated in this picture is a tree-like structure. This tree-like structure is hierarchical and has different levels. Then, how many clusters we want depends on which level we want to set the cutoff. If we set a cutoff here, we will only get two clusters, cluster A, cluster B, C, D, E, F. And if we set a cutoff here, we've got three clusters, cluster A, cluster B, C, cluster D, E, F. And if we set uh, the cutoff to the lowest level, we will have our original six data points. The diagram we saw in the cluster gram is just a compact representation of this hierarchical tree-like structure after turned upside down. Above is the main idea of hierarchical clustering. 
Here are some additional things you may want to consider when making a cluster gram. The first topic is metric. Metric defines how to measure the distance between two gene expression profiles. The most common metric is Euclidean distance. Each gene expression profile is a vector of values and the Euclidean distance is calculated by the formula below. I think most of you are familiar with this formula. Besides Euclidean distance, you can choose cosine distance, correlation distance, Hamming distance, and so on. But most of the time, Euclidean distance will do the job. One special case may be, for example, your data set is binary, and you may want to use Hamming distance as your metric because it is specially designed for binary data. Look at this picture again. You can see hydro clustering is performed twice on both directions column-wise and row-wise. These two clusterings are independent of each other because the order of components do not matter when you compute the distance between two vectors. If this doesn't make sense to you, don't mind. Just remember that two clusterings are independent of each other. The result is that similar gene expression profiles are clustered together and the genes have similar expressions across all profiles are also clustered together. For example, genes consistently highly expressed in cluster 2 is clustered together, like here. The second topic will be the linkage function. You need a linkage function when you want to calculate the distance between clusters. Here is a simple example. You want to calculate the distance between clustered data point DE and a data point F. So how do you define the distance between them? There are a few options. The most common method is called average. In this method, you calculate the distance between D and F and the distance between E and F. Then you use the average of the two distance and the distance between this D cluster and this F. Median method will use the median of the distance and a single will yield the shortest distance of the two and the complete will yield the longest distance of the two. Here's one more example. If you now want to calculate the distance between cluster BC and cluster DE using the single method, you calculate the distance between BD, CD and the distance between BE, CE and you got four distance and you find that the distance between C and D is the shortest and then you will use this distance as the distance between these two clusters. One more thing to consider is standardization. Standardization converts data into standardized z-scores. Z-score means how many standard deviations away is a value from mean. If a value equals to the mean plus two standard deviation, its z-score will be two. Standardization is a normalization process that forces the values to fall into the range that is most suitable to be visualized in a cluster gram. There are two options, row standardization and column standardization. Row standardization calculates z-scores for each row, and column standardization calculates z-scores for each column. For gene function data, we generally use row standardization because we want to say for each gene how their expression values change across different conditions. Okay, now we will begin our demo on cluster gram in MATLAB. Now, let's begin to make a cluster gram on the cancer subtype gene expression data. First, import the data from a CSV file. Click the Import Data button. Select the CSV file and wait for loading. We will import all the numeric values as a matrix and give it the name as expressions and then click import. The next we will import the column labels. We will import them as a cell array and name it as subtypes. Then we change the data type to text because they are strings and click import. The next step is to import the raw labels, which are the gene symbols. We also import them as a cell array, and then we name it as genes. The data type is already text, so we won't change that and click import. 
Okay, now in our workspace, we have three variables, expressions, genes, and subtypes. Cluster gram is quite easy in MATLAB because it is only one single function. You just need to specify all its properties. So this function has many input arguments. The name of this function is cluster gram. Okay, I think I will open the script I already wrote. And the name is Cutgram. The first input argument is the expressions. Then we will specify all the properties. The first one is raw labels. We will give it uh, the variable genes. And then the column labels, which are the subtypes. Then are the raw plist and the column plist, which specify the metrics to be used in column-wise hierarchical clustering and row-wise hierarchical clustering. They are, we will use both Euclidean's here. The linked function, we will use average. Then we specify standardization. I give it a number 2 here, because in MATLAB, number 2 means row-wise standardization, while number 1 means column standardization. The color map I will use red, blue, C map. Traditionally, it is usually red green. Now, red blue is more popular to take care of red green color blindness people. Okay, now I will copy this command and paste it into command window and press enter to run it. Okay, now we got our figure. This command, however, looks too long and it's not easy to write. Actually, many popular properties are already set by default, like the metric by default is Euclidean and linkage is average. So you can write the command in short as the one below. In this command, you do need to specify raw pdist, column pdist, and linkage because Euclidean and average are already used by default, so this command looks nicer and shorter. And it will do the same thing as I paste here and run it. We got the same figure. After you get this class gram, you can use this button to get a scale bar, and uh, you can use this button to toggle the dinogram and this button to zoom in, and this button to zoom out. After you are in the rooming mode, you can use this button to pan over the figure. One nice thing about this clustergram is that you can select a subset of the clustergram and copy it to a new clustergram. Then you can examine this part of the cluster gram in closed detail. Here, I will teach you a trick to export cluster gram in vector format. First, click Export Setup, change rendering to Painter's vector format, and click Export. And choose a format as the PDF. This is the key step. Use EPS, won't work, and uh, I will give it a name as Clustergram, and uh, in this export, I already resized the figure, but it's better not to resize it and just uh, use the figure as it appeared at the first time.